Hi guys, Nature of Body Beyond today with you again. Maybe it's a bit late, but I wanted to talk to you about Kevin Lebron's last competition, particularly about his conditions after the contest, and I think I need to talk about it now. I mean, Arnold Classic Australia show that happened this year. So, as you know, Kevin's had more bodybuilding experience than his peers. He took part in so many competitions during his career, during his prime, and got good places, sometimes best places. For your information, he was several times the second runner at Mr. Olympia show, the first runner at Arnold Classic 1994 and 1996, so he had pretty impressive uh, career for a bodybuilder. But the most interesting fact that in 2003 he stopped competing at all and pivoted from bodybuilding to other activities such as music, family life and so on and lost all of his bodybuilding gains. For instance, look at his shape. He looks like a normal guy, not as a professional bodybuilder here. Anyway, he just kept fit. However, in 2016 he announced that he would return to Mr. Olympia and entered the competition without formal qualification. That of course was fair. Firstly, it's Kevin Levron, a prominent bodybuilder, and secondly, in order to attract more attention to the event, it was the best option for the hosts of Mr. Olympia. In my opinion, everybody was a bit bored with Phil Heath winning every year and the old school bodybuilder appearing on the stage after 13 years of staying away from it was a real nail biter. Although he was far beyond his greatest, his result I think was impressive, as he resumed his bodybuilding exercises so swiftly and changed his shape so dramatically. Anyway, after the contest, Kevin was honest about his shortcomings in 2016. There are lots of videos on YouTube about him prior to the contest and after the contest. But let's have a look at him at Arnold Classic Australia show, his last competition. So let's have a look at his posing. Well, we can see that he is bigger than in 2016. Muscles are fuller, but the conditioning seems a bit worse than in 2016. Still legs are a bit off, bubble gut is of course visible a bit too. The lighting maybe is different as well, so it's difficult to make a precise comparison. Front double biceps. In my opinion, and I think that you agree that his biceps don't have separation. Even during his prime his biceps uh, were almost the same. So that's genetic, so there was nothing he could have done with it. So here the upper body looks great, but the legs spoil almost uh, the whole picture. And his signature pose that reveals his full potential like in the past. Side chest pose. Most muscular, I think it's great. So the midsection also leaves much to be desired, but as I mentioned in my previous videos, be my decreases over time. For bodybuilders older than 40 years of age, it's difficult to maintain the abdominals and the lower back shredded. As for legs, the muscle mass firstly decreases in lower limbs within years. If we look at Kevin, what we can say? Uh, did he prepare properly? The answer is yes. Not only because of his status, but just by looking at him. Did his shape deserve the top 10? Let's be honest. Of course not. And uh, there were so many other guys with better legs and midsection as well. There are lots of videos where he talks about his result, but I judge by what I can see. If you compare Kevin with what he used to be, needless to say he was head above what he is now. But judging by his words, he didn't do it just uh, to win, but to inspire other people and show what he could actually do with his body. Now it's high time to return to the topic of this video. In the interview with David Palomba several days after the event, he talks about his results and um, show his upper body during the interview. And what we can see now. 
He is better, of course. His midsection is better. We can see more vascularity and, of course, there is no bubble gut at all. Kevin's like showing off a bit. Even Dave Palomber says that he is 40% or 40 times better than on the stage, than he was on the stage. So guys, by doing this video I wanted to emphasize the fact that most of bodybuilders feel that several days or one day after the contest they seem to look better. It may be true, but we will never know. Firstly, by looking at this example, the lighting is different. Secondly, but I think not the most importantly, it can be just their imagination or to justify their bad placing they do it. Finally, we cannot judge their shape just by some videos. Anyway, the fact that most bodybuilders feel like their fullness and quality of muscles are better after the contest exists. There are lots of reasons for this. As I've mentioned, it can be just their imagination or justification. If it isn't, the reduction in stress and uh, falling off the diet can affect the whole body in the good way. Even some guys assume that it would have been better to stop dieting one or two days before a contest. I wouldn't agree, as if in this case it's doubtful how their hormonal system will react and whether they will cope with emotions just before they start or not. So I think it's better to keep everything in accordance with the plan until the competition is over. Anyway, this is my opinion. I am not a professional, even an amateur bodybuilder. Uh, but I know a little bit. So I look forward to your thoughts on this topic in the comment section below. See you guys next time and subscribe to my channel. Good luck.